I'm Lauren Huffman. I'm the staff advisor for Alpha Lambda Delta at Kent State in Northeast Ohio. Also with me here is Grace. Grace, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Grace Altieri. I am the co-communications chair this year. Cool. Thank you all so much for having us. Um, we have a little presentation for you today about engaging your members. I'd also like to note that we have a bunch of our officers here um, too. So if you guys have questions, like please feel free to put them in the chat while we're talking and they'll probably be able to answer them for you while we're chatting away here. Um, so I thought I would start off with a little bit of information about our chapter so you guys have some context. So um, our chapter has about 800 members. It's a pretty big chapter. Um, and we have nine chapter officers. So um, we have a president, a vice president, two communications chairs, of which Grace is one, two membership chairs, and two programming chairs. And then we have a student advisor who is the former president of ALD. Um, we did restructure our chapter officers um, about three years ago in terms of their roles, just to kind of better suit the activities that our chapter does. So for example, our membership chairs, they administer the point system that we started a couple of years ago. Um, a couple of details about the point system. Obviously, we all know that ALD membership is permanent and you don't need to earn points in our chapter in order to remain a member in ALD, but we started a couple of years ago offering points as an incentive program to encourage people to get more involved. Um, the goal is for the students and members to earn at least three points each semester so that the chapter will then pay for their cords at graduation. Also, we do um, bookstore gift cards for our top point earners every year. So it's like a little chapter scholarship program that we started. This has increased our engagement significantly. So I definitely would recommend it and would be happy to talk to any of you that are interested in learning more about implementing a point system. Um, our members earn points by attending our monthly meetings, volunteering at our events, participating in fundraisers, um, they can also serve on our Order of the Torch or Maintaining the Flame Scrapbook Committee to earn a point. And then also our um, officers will kind of offer pop-up opportunities throughout the year of things that they think are valuable for our members to do. So like last spring we offered, or last year we offered um, a point for voting. And um, also if um, seniors were about to graduate wanted to send in their information for a senior spotlight, they could also get a point and then it was posted on Instagram. So our membership chairs record the points in a Google form and they track the points so the students always know how many points they have. So next up, uh, so, and also just wanted to say there's a little uh, screenshot of our website up here for you too. Um, so highlighting a couple of events um, we did. So I'm going to talk mostly about events that we did last year will be we virtual, but also talk about how we're transitioning them to kind of be, um, I guess, hybrid this year so that we have options for everyone. Um, so bingo um, or game night, we're actually bringing that again uh, next week. We're going to bring it back. So it'll be virtual and also um, we'll have an in-person option for students to participate. It was on Zoom and we use just a lot of Kahoot and that kind of thing. Okay, and then last year, our now president Maggie, she organized our first annual five, charity 5K. Um, she was the programming chair last year and was able to organize a virtual 5K since we were in the pandemic. Um, this allowed for everyone to participate wherever they were. We opened it for all through October, so everyone had time to. Um, spooky Sprint was the theme, just to be on theme of uh, October. And, uh, we offered a medal and t-shirt for part of the registration, uh, kind of little gift and award kind of thing. Uh, we also were able to um, make part of the registration via donation to our local Kent Social Services. Uh, a lot of our fundraising goes to local organizations so that everyone can feel um, like they're participating and giving back to something that they know. Um, we had a pretty good turnout for a first year and we're really excited to get going on our uh, second time around. Um, community outreach will be a big focus since we do open it to all the Kent community. We have outreach to all of the other uh, organizations and other frats and fraternity uh, sororities on campus. 
And uh, so we're gonna analyze how our outreach went last year and try to do better this year. Next up is a smaller thing. Um, we did a show and tell last year where students were able to bring something that was significant to them and kind of just share that with the group. I included this because I thought this might be a nice kind of icebreaker for some like chapter meetings and stuff like that. So just an idea of ways to get people chatting. It can also be done really easily virtually. Uh, so toy drives are something we've done multiple times, uh, especially around the holidays. Uh, Again, with a local organization, Children's Akron's Children's Hospital, we uh, organized a contact, contactless toy drive last year um, where everyone was able to either drop off donations if they were close to campus or uh, give a monetary donation through a, a website online. And we offered points, of course, for participating in these events. Um, it's really fun to organize all of these uh, fundraisers and give back to our community. And it's a really easy thing for our members to participate in. So we did a midterm de-stress event last year. And um, this was remote, so we had different breakout rooms on Zoom. Um, but I'd also like to kind of um, highlight another idea. So this, I think in two weeks, um, our programming co-chair is organizing a succulent event, which is kind of a similar idea where it's like a crafty kind of de-stress type thing. Um, and so we're gonna cover the cost of succulents and then members can come and like decorate um, and put together the succulents to have and take back to their rooms and their houses. So as a communication co-chair, uh, communication's a big deal with me. Uh, I run e our email account, which is aldquestions at gmail.com. This is open to all of our members and also open out to anyone here who would like to further ask us questions. But uh, our emails to reach out to all of our members the fastest way, communicate our meetings, times, and when events are happening. Uh, in order to relay this information fast, uh, we, I highlight important dates and link everything that they need to know in the emails. And then a more organ organic form of informing our members of events and meetings and everything is through our social media. Our Instagram is run by my partner, co-chair Katie. She has done a phenomenal job uh, this past year at making our page look more uniform and organized. Uh, with her skills in Photoshop and graphic design and has just been able to make our page look more cohesive and professional. Um, so that's a more organic way for our members to get uh, reminders about events or anything due or event or sorry meetings. <laughs> um, so communication is huge uh, to reach out to all of our members whether they're uh, attending or not and it's a great way for them to ask us things and have that communication. So as Grace mentioned, a couple of years ago, we started this uh, Gmail account. Um, we found this to be a little bit um, more easy um, to pass down to officers as we have new communications chairs to just have it be the same email address. So, um, if, and same goes for you guys. So if you would like to send us any questions, please feel free to do so. We would welcome that. And thank you guys so much for letting us present. And we're excited to be here and hear your ideas too.